This morning, um, we're going to read from Psalm 18, verses 1 through 19. And it's a longer reading, but I I want to walk you through it. I think there's some critical pieces in this psalm that really speak to us. Like last week's psalm, it spoke to our condition, and it spoke to us reaching out to God. Um, In our powerlessness, we can find power, right? This week, this week, the, the text is about how, kind of how we can be firm in the fire. You know, there's so many, there's so many ways that Scripture addresses um, our human condition today, even though it was written a thousand, two thousand years before Jesus in some situations. So uh, Psalm one eighteen, uh, Psalm eighteen, is. Uh, is a psalm that's 50 verses long, but we're just going to look at the first 19 verses. And the psalmist starts out writing. He says, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And the, the psalmist here in the first couple of verses just really lifts God up in, in, and praises God because he, he understands that, that in reality, God is our foundation. Jesus talks about, you know, build it, the, the wise man builds his house on the rock, not the sand. So when the storm comes, it stand, the house on the rock stands firm. And the psalmist is recognizing how important it is that God is our firm foundation. And then he goes on in verse 3. He says, I call to you the Lord who is worthy of my praise. And I have been saved from my enemies. So so there's a relationship that's happened here. Maybe you have a a relationship with God where, where you've witnessed God in your life powerfully, raising you up, lifting you through situations. And he calls out to God. He says kind of like, God, I'm here, and I know you're there, and I know you're hearing me. And you and I, we have a relationship, and I'm, I'm so glad that I have you in my life. You're my, my stronghold. And then he goes on to kind of begin to describe the situation that he's facing. He says, the cords of death entangle me. The torrents of destruction overwhelm me. The cords of the grave coil around me. The snares of death confront me. In my distress, I call to you, Lord. I cry to you, my God, for help, for his, for his temple. He has heard, uh, from his temple, he has heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. The earth trembled. And the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. So, so you, have this, you have this person crying out to God out of, out of a relationship that, that they have. And, and describing whether, whether it's actual death that they're talking about or whether it's, it's a metaphor for whatever it is that they're facing that's, that's kind of just choking them or, 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 or depressing them or upsetting them or causing fear and anxiety in them in, in a way that's so traumatic. And we get to, we get to this verse, verse 7, that we just read where the earth is trembling and it's God responding, right? God responds to us in a way that the Earth trembles and quakes, and the foundations of the mountains shake, and they tremble because God is angry and he wants to fix the situation. He's going to come to our rescue. And, and the trembling of the earth and, and, and the quaking kind of reminds us of, of Easter Sunday when the, the stone was rolled away and everything changed. God came to our rescue in such a huge way. 
And the psalmist is, is writing about how when God responds, listen to how it continues on in verse 8. Smoke rose from his nostrils, consuming fire from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and he came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim, the angels, and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made the darkness his covering, his canopy around him, the dark rain clouds of the sky. Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemies. With great bolts of lightning, he routed them. The valleys of the sea were exposed. The foundations of the earth laid bare. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blasts of your breath from your nostrils. He just exposed. He expounds on how powerful God is and how, how when God engages, the foundations of the earth shake. And the only thing left is the foundation of God. And we find ourselves there because of the relationship we have with God and how powerful that is. That's, you know, we go back to the beginning. I love you, Lord, my strength, he said, right? In verse one, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer in verse two, right? So here's how it continues on. So he just he 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 gives us these these uh, these visions or these um, these images of how God engages when we cry out to Him. He says, goes on in verse sixteen. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemies and from my foes who were too strong for me. God just empowers us and lifts us and protects us. Isn't that awesome? And then he goes on to, they, they confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He broke me out into a spacious place. And he rescued me because he delighted in me. Isn't that awesome? It's, it's God's relationship with us that he's just delighted in. He wants to be part of our lives. And, and this psalm just reminds us so powerfully about how God loves us so much. That when we're in trouble, when his children are in trouble, the earth quakes and the mountains shake and nothing separates us from God's love. And, and he reaches down into the depths and pulls us up so that not even death itself can hold us down. It's so powerful. It, it, um, it reminds me, uh, reading this and, and, and thinking about how the images that the psalmist is writing, it reminds me of Daniel chapter 3 and chapter 6, where Daniel is talking about uh, three guys. Uh, the, uh, the Veggie Tales, if you have kids, right? When, when, I, when my kids were little, we watched a lot of Veggie Tales. And um, we, loved, uh, we loved the one Rack, Shack, and Benny. And it was a story about, about three boys who, uh, who were just, who, they were firm in their faith. And, and not only in Daniel, when, when we're talking about Rakshak and Benny, right? Not only in Daniel, but, um, but it, throughout the Bible, we have these, these situations that, that are real, that God just does amazing things. And, and it's because of our relationship with God. It's because of, because of God's primary firmness to us in our relationship. It's God who provides that foundation. It's God who continues to reach out to us with grace upon grace, even in the midst of our brokenness and sin, even when we blow it, even when everything goes wrong. He's still there with us. He's with us in the fire. 
He was with Moses as, as the seas part, parted and they crossed the sea. He was with Moses in the desert, guiding with a pillar of smoke and fire. So, the, so, the, so God's people knew where to go. He was with the disciples, healing and and teaching. He was with us when he took our sin on the cross so we could be free from the bondage of sin and death. And he's with us today because he's risen from the grave. And, and, um, and the psalmist is just, just letting us know as a reminder that God is our rock. You know, we, we sometimes, sometimes we get in situations where the world, uh, people around us, uh, different situations, they just bring us down. We, we blow it um, or we don't blow it and we get attacked, right? And there are those situations where the, the world is just challenging us and challenging us and challenging us and, and pushing on us and pushing us down, reminding us how frail we are and how insignificant we are. But that's not true. That's not true at all. We are God's children and have a relationship with God, the Most High, who is our foundation. Not because he lays the foundation for everybody and we're generic, but because he loves us. He loves our unique personality. He gave us specific gifts and specific talents for this time so that we can meet the needs of the people around us and love and love and love. We can love him. We can love the people around us, even when we're challenged. It's when we're challenged that the psalmist reminds us that we have to go back and remember where our foundation is. We have to remember how firmly God loves us and that we can rely on him and trust him. You know, when we we can't muster up enough energy or enough courage or enough uh, you know, an, enough of anything that we need to overcome the battles that the world pushes at us. It's critical and crucial that we come back and know that we're not just a number. That we are a person uniquely designed by the hand of God and redeemed and saved because of his love for us. When we, when we come into this world knowing that, knowing who we are in God's eyes, the world trembles. The world shakes. The world gets jealous. The world just rejects us and pushes us. And you know, that's where Jesus last week, if you were here with us last week, we read from the Beatitudes in Matthew 5. And Jesus starts off this first epic sermon talking about how how the world is kind of turned upside down compared to God's kingdom. And the reality for us is we are living God's kingdom out now and throughout eternity. And we are guaranteed those same promises and joys and peace and tranquility and all of it. We We can have it now because God loves us and he is our foundation. And the world gets jealous of that. You know, quite, quite honestly, I have, I have to tell you, maybe you've heard me say this before. I don't, I don't understand um, why there's so much negativity towards Christianity today in the world. Because it's good news. The, gospel, the gospels, the, the biographies of Jesus are about good news. It's about good stuff. It's not about anything bad. It's about how much God loves us and how cherished we are and how we have an eternity with him. And yet, I don't understand why that's so offensive, but it is. 
It is to so many, and it becomes so challenging when we try and live out those kingdom principles in this world. But I want to tell you that God is our foundation. And that in everything, no matter whether you're facing the fire or whether you're in the midst of the storm or no matter what, God's got you. You can be, you can be firm in the fire because you are a child of God. You know, um, I'm... I'm starting to enjoy some of the videos that are popping up. You know, some of them are going viral today, these days. Uh, people who were starting to think um, and experience things differently. I think it's out of a, I think uh, it's a level of insanity, right? Because we're isolated and we're doing things so different and it's, it's, it's really challenging. And some people are able to find the humor in it and, and, uh, and poke fun at different things in loving ways. And, and, um, and there's a couple of videos that, that, I, that I found um, fun. It helps me stay a little sane in, in this time. But I want to let you know that our sanity in tough times, you know, we can find it here and there. Um, in different things, you know, that just keep us grounded. But our, our sanity comes not necessarily from being able to get grounded, but from finding out that grounded means grounded in the firmness of our relationship with God. It's not, a, it's not being grounded in the sand, but it's being grounded on the rock of God. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to stay focused. Stay focused on God. Take timeouts every day, you know, like adult timeouts, kid timeouts. But take a timeout to just focus on God. Set your alarm on your, on your phone for every hour or every couple hours. And, and when it goes off, just focus on God. Focus on God. Use this time to focus on that foundation and that firmness that we have in, in our God. This God who, who comes down out of heaven in the clouds with hailstones and lightning bolts and, and vanquishes our enemies and reaches into the depths to pull us out. This God who comes and, and pays the ultimate price for our sin and actually raises from the dead to show us and, aff- and, and assure us that we are not only loved and not only cherished and not only have a relation of, of a, a firm relationship and a God who, who, who commits to us, but we are eternal. And, and the, the resurrection was that, that sign for us that not even death. You don't know you are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. God loves you so much. And if, if you need if you need a sense of, of peace at this time, or you need to know that God's with you at this time, or you're really struggling with something. In the next few moments, I just want to close and pray with you and invite you to let God be your foundation. To let, to let this God who, who created all that is had that much power and and has so much love that he knows the very thoughts you have and the desires of your heart. He knows your DNA. He knows you personally. And he loves you so much that when you're in trouble, he comes into action. We can give our troubles and our concerns to God who loves us and responds to us. So I want to invite you to pray with me.
awesome and wonderful God, we just come to you and we just give you thanks for all that you do and, 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 and how much you love us. We come this morning, God, and, and just in this, in this unique situation in life where we find ourselves, and we call out to you. We cry to you, God, that, that you might uh, respond to your loving children so that we would know that our foundation is firm. And God, this morning, there, there might be some among us who, who just need to renew their commitment to you or maybe have never had a, a relationship with you and, and don't know how firm the footing is. And God, I just pray that as we make uh, as we make a commitment as a community to you, that that you would that you would hear the prayers of of our brothers and sisters who are reaching out to you for the first time, or reaching out to you in renewal, God, and that you might transform them in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, today and forevermore. Amen.